I was working with a student who had recorded vocals for a song that he was working on, and he had added several effects to his vocal channel, made some adjustments to the parameters of each of the processors, and was happy with the results. And during uh, one of our meetings, he asked if there was a way that he could save that chain of effects so that he could then use it in another song and save time and, and doesn't have to reload those effects and try to adjust the parameters again. Now, of course, we do have a way to do that, and so we're gonna take a quick look at that. Now here, I've just got three effects here. The Pro EQ from Personas. I have an analog delay, which is also from Personas, but here I have a Spark Verb by UVI, which is a third-party plugin. So this will work with any of your plugins. Now, at the top of this channel, we have this downward-facing arrow. If I click on that, at the, or near the bottom here, we have Store Effects Chain. So I'll go ahead and click on that, and I'll just call this tutorial preset and I'm going to tab down to subfolder and let's just go ahead and click there to input my presets and this will just make sense in a moment. I'll go ahead and click OK and we're going to switch over to another song just to show how these will show up in a new song that you create. But take note of this recording here and the level, the waveforms there. Now I'm going to press Control and N to bring up the new song dialog. I'll just click on OK. And then I'm going to come to the files. And then here I have that same audio file. I'll drag that in and Shift and E to make this a bit larger. OK, now let's come to the Mix Console, clicking in the bottom right. We'll pull this up. And now I will come to the again to the same downward facing arrow clicking once, and we can see that we have a folder here for my presets. And so that's what we were doing when we added the folder. We can nest these within a folder that we name, and then here is our tutorial preset. I'll click once on that, and then we can see that all of our effects with their adjustments have been added to this channel on this new song. Now one quick thing to be mindful of when you're using effects chain presets is that it's important that you're gain staging properly when you're recording and mixing to be sure that these are going to function as you expect them to and as they did in a previous song that you may have done. So we can see that this event that I brought in is a lot quieter just looking at the uh, waveform here visually. If I click on the document icon in the top right hand corner, switch back, we can see that this is a bit louder. So if we use these same effects and they were set to the other event which was recorded at a louder volume and we had something like compression or any kind of saturation where it's level dependent on how it's gonna behave or sound, you're gonna to need to gain stage so that you can get close to what you achieved in the original recording where you created the effects chain. So this is a good place to start, but just always be sure that you're gain staging and checking your parameters to be sure that everything is working okay. And of course, listening to be sure that it's sounding as you want. Now let's hop over to the browser just to show that we can also come to the effects tab and then at the top here we have effects chains. So if I click on that and expand it out, we can see the folder my presets and we can access that from the browser and drag that onto our window or the track that we'd like to add it to. So this is another area that we can access the, the presets that we create. Also, if I were to click on the eye and open up the inspector, while this track is selected, I can again click on the downward facing arrow here, the same as in the console, and we can see my presets. And so we can add our effects chains from here as well. Let's close out the inspector. Now, what about managing these effects chains that we save? How, what if we would like to remove this and we no longer need it? And I'm just going to remove the entire folder. So I'm gonna right click here, and I'm gonna choose show and explore. Let's shift and F to come out of full screen mode so that we can see that. Okay, so here we can see tutorial preset nested within the my preset. So I'm gonna come up one by clicking here. And now I'm just gonna, while this is highlighted, delete. Yes, we'll close out the explorer window. Now we've deleted that, but when I come to the downward facing arrow, we can still see a folder for my presets and the tutorial preset. Again, also if we come to the effects chains here, we still have my presets and the tutorial preset. So we just remove that from our system. So what's going on here? Well, we can come to the home tab here 
And then at the bottom, we have re-index presets. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now we'll come back to our effects tab. And then we can see that that my presets folder and the tutorial preset have been removed here. Also coming to the console and the downward facing arrow, we can see that it's removed here. So just an important step after you delete presets or effects chains, you may need to come here and re-index presets. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful. And if you are someone who is interested in one-on-one -on -one training to speed up your learning curve in Studio One, I do provide that over Zoom and you work directly with me. The meeting can be recorded so that you have a video reference of everything that we covered for future reference. And you can find out more information about the training as far as my available hours and the rates by checking out the link in the description of this video or the pinned comment below. All right, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next tutorial.